over to the orbit, I'm going to have a foot race going on. <laughs> You'll win. <laughs> well, you uh, are so responsible for so many musical things that went on in Oklahoma. And, uh, but, you know, especially regarding the trombone, I think all those years early on in the 70s or something, any time you were around the trombone part, I'd have you conduct something or whatever the case may be. And what did you do finally for your inauguration? Well, that's why I'm coming tonight because I always remember our friendship has gone on for years and years and years. And when I ran for re-election as governor, and now this is where I sneak in bragging, I became the first governor in Oklahoma to ever be re-elected. But what's even more wonderful for me is I am the only governor that ever carried all 77 counties. Well, in 1982, when I did that, I was thinking, gosh, how do I get to brag on I carried all 76 counties? And then I thought, well, the most popular song at that moment was 77 Trombones. <laughs> <laughs> and my father, that's in and and I go to our Northwood banquet. I want to be led into the banquet hall with all those people with an orchestra of 76 Trombones plus one leading the big parade. And he called and got a trombone player from all 77 counties that came to Oklahoma City and led Donna and me into the inauguration back of playing 76 plus one. Yes, 76 plus one. It was a great experience. Seven trombones led the big parade. You mentioned it was all for a great man too here. So we're going to play 76. You, you can conduct. You want to conduct? I'm going to listen. You're going to stay right there. <laughs> Here we go, 76 strong balls. You might be letting him in to his inauguration. Was going on. I was in the ninth grade at McAllister, 
It was Saturday night, and I was studying for a test on Monday, and I was listening to the radio. And can you imagine what I was listening to on Saturday night in 1943? The Lucky Strike Hit Parade. The 10 most popular songs in America this week. Number 10, they played. Number nine, number eight, seven, six, five. Number three, number one. I'm sitting there studying Latin, or whatever I was Spanish, whatever I was studying. And suddenly they started, I said, my, my, my gosh, Lucky Strike hit the rate was singing about my state. And they were playing Oklahoma. And we talked about Lord Rogers tonight, and Lord Rogers follows. Just think, the most popular man in the world, in the world, was from Catoosa, Utica, Claremore, Oklahoma, Indian Territory, Will Rogers. The most popular Broadway musical in that period of time that set the world's record for being on Broadway was a play called Oklahoma. It was about my state. That's right. The most popular musical in the world was about this state. And then, 1953, I had the privilege of being a member of the legislature. So I introduced a bill to change the state song from Oklahoma of Toast to the song from the flood. Most popular song in the world. And I thought it would be a piece of cake in the legislature to make that the state song. And there's a man from Mayo, we called him Old Man Huff. I think he's about 60. Old Man Huff got up and said, You want to change our state song? You want to change our state song from one written by someone couched in tradition and steeped in history? And did that, and you want to change it to a song written by two New York Jews who've never even been to Oklahoma? And I realized that deal was going to pass. So then, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I asked unanimous consent. We laid this bill over one legislative day. And if any member, including Old Man Huff, had gotten up to our chair, that bill would have never come up again. He didn't object. So they laid it over. And man, I got busy. I called the state representative that was from Chickasha, Oklahoma College for Women. I said, You got a choir that can sing songs from Oklahoma? He said, We just did the play. I said, I want to hear tomorrow. <laughs> I called Jenkins Music Store in Oklahoma City. I said, If you got any piece of legislation that's being considered that you want to pass in the House of Representatives, they said, well, matter of fact, yes, they did. I said, I need a piano. <laughs> <laughs> then I called Rich Bob. Rich, who was then living in Tulsa as a real estate person, was from McAllister, Oklahoma, went to high school three years ahead of me in McAllister, Oklahoma, the only Oklahoma to ever play the role of Curly and star on Broadway was Rich Bob from McAllister. I called him Rich. You still got some of that crap you wore on the Broadway? <laughs> He said, put it on and be here tomorrow. He said, what are you going to rehearse? He said, we have rehearsal. You're singing, and you just sing with them. And the next day, Jenkins Music with the piano in there, all from the college for women came. I said, I haven't been there all my costumes. And I told Rich, Rich, wear that stuff. I want to pick belts off it. And you stay, and you just come in and in. And then I got up, I said, Mr. Speaker, and members of the House of Representatives, I asked unanimous consent, and if anyone has objected, they couldn't have been there. I said, we have some special guests, a girls' choir from Chickasha is here today, and I asked them if they would like to perform. Is there any objection? No objection. And I said, we're going to be entertained. And they came in in their costume, and they sang, oh, what a beautiful morning, and chicks and ducks and geese, there's anything. And then suddenly, the piano started. And Bridge 
Andrew been waiting outside, kicked open the door, and had his hands on the bell buckle, and he said, oh, oh, when Bob's ripping down the fire, the crowd started singing, and the legislator started applauding. You see, 300 people in the gallery stood, and she, I put them all up there. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I move passage of House Bill 1049. Can it pass? <laughs> and that's not going to be your state's fault. Now, a little more personal. This box, 1953, Governor Johnston Murray gave me this box because he signed the bill making Oklahoma the state song with this pen and he autographed it to me and gave it to me. 1953. The day he signed it in the afternoon, I kept saying, can you do it in the morning? Do it in the morning. No, 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 no. Do it in the morning. Did it in the afternoon. And he did it in the late afternoon, and the McAllister High School Orchestra was having this spring concert that night, and I was going to go home and conduct that song. So about 4 o'clock, he signed the bill with this pen to make Oklahoma the state song. I drove from Oklahoma City to McAllister. I ran out of gas <laughs> and, and uh, turned it on the Highway 270. I hitchhiked on into the Messiah Temple where they were performing in God theory. And he said, where have you been? I said, I've been coming in here. But here he is. So, Herb. Okay, you're going to lead us from, from there? Okay. You're going to come from oh, wow. the <laughs> And I'm going to ask Herb to lead the, the, the combo players. And I'm going to lead you. And hopefully we'll get together at the end and do the other. Now, remember this. Oh, I'll tell you this after we sing the song. But this is how, that's how you got this song. The most popular song in the world is now our state song, Oklahoma. <laughs> Thank you. 
to a play written by Ben Griggs from Claremore, Oklahoma, called Green Grove Logic, and Rogers and Hammerstein put it to music. And they did not like Green Grove Logic for Broadway, so they changed the name to Away We Go. They opened in Boston, they said, that's not very exciting. And they opened in Philadelphia, that's not very exciting. Rich Vaughn told me they were having a meeting, said, we've got to change the name of this play. And somebody said, Miss Hammerstein said, well, let's name it Oklahoma. It's about Oklahoma. And somebody in the room said, what's exciting about Oklahoma? Miss <laughs> Hammerstein said, let's put an exclamation point after it. <laughs> and call it Oklahoma. So ladies and gentlemen, the state song that you just heard is Oklahoma exclamation point. And that's my goal and your goal in life. The problems in life put an exclamation point in your life that's a lot more exciting. Yeah. <laughs>